After the hyperfactorio and satisfactory update 4's release, we have found ourselves a little lacklustre on the factory gaming front. Sure, Dyson Sphere has recently released an update, but on the not so distant horizon there's a new game that's just arrived today on Kickstarter which is definitely worth checking out. And it even has a closed alpha and beta coming out in the next few months. But the two devs have kindly sent me a pre-alpha key last week and in their own words it's very early access gameplay so of course I thought it wise to give you a little preview of the game in its current state. At this moment I've played the teaser map five times. The first three times I had to restart out of frustration and then the last two times I managed to complete the teaser island. And if you're watching this on the 1st of June then you can jump over to my Twitch, the link is in the description, to see me streaming the game from the start of the mission to the end. The fact that I've already completed the press release level several times should tell you that I'm actually enjoying the game and that I believe it really does have the opportunity to provide a great gaming experience for factory logistic gamers. So what's the game about? It certainly has factory elements to it, but I'd say if you delve under the surface you'll notice that the game centres itself on the management of resources and there's no escaping it. You'll have to balance food, water, resources for factories, fuel, power, vehicle maintenance and much more. I'll admit that during my first attempts I felt rather overwhelmed and I think this is due to a rather sparse tutorial at this moment in time. Upon starting we find ourselves on this starting island. On it we have various resources scattered around the map. The tutorial on the press release as I mentioned is sparse at best but suggests that you should build furnaces to produce iron and start creating construction parts which in turn will allow you to build a research facility, farm and many other things. From the beginning of the game your logistics are done by truck with the exception of molten liquids and gases. Now we control the trucks indirectly. For example we cannot click on a vehicle to do a particular chore but rather as the chores are given out there is a queue of delegation and the vehicles fulfill the queue as and when available. This actually brings me to my second piece of feedback based on the game. We do not currently have the ability to prioritize what is being built. So if for example we're building several buildings at once and suddenly I run out of maintenance and need to build another maintenance depot for example, I can't prioritize resources to that particular build. Same with various tasks that need doing, which would certainly be useful. That being said, we have the opportunity to use Unity which is the equivalent of an in-game currency that allows you to instantly build buildings along with being used to research new techs and speed up factory production and this is generated by pleasing your population or at least providing that they're fed and watered. Now the great thing about Unity is that if you have enough in reserve you can quickly set up new resource lines or help increase productivity when you're in an emergency. This should of course be used as like a, a rainy day fund if you will to, to dip into when needed. Now once you have a basic smelting system up and running we're introduced to yet another feature that the game offers. I've already mentioned farms, yes farming. Once you've placed farms you can choose the crop. Potatoes feed your community but they deplete the land's fertility so we need to set up a crop rotation to keep the field fertility high. Now it's a nice little addition and there'll be more focus on this later on with the opportunity to swap between different crops and types of field. Here for example I'm using the farm but we also have the irrigated farm available which requires water and should you wish manure. And later there have been some sneak peeks of a greenhouse style farm. Now along with farming there is also mining which is where the game takes another interesting turn. The resources all have limited quantities on the island which means you'll have to explore the map using your boat once it's repaired to receive resources from other island nodes. That being said what's interesting about the limited resources is that the terrain is fully dynamic which means if you dig resources out of a hole you'll have a hole in the land. And if there's any land that has been excavated that excess land will have to go somewhere else which allows us to build ramps up cliffs to access new areas and resources. 
When it comes to exploration, the system feels very simplistic. Your trip can travel as far as the fuel your ship holds, providing it can transport you back home. But you can only go to given nodes. This means that you may discover more survivors or possibly extra resources such as the offshore oil platform here. This gives us extra resources to use on our own island and I hope we will be able to eventually automate this as sending our ship back and forth manually gets pretty old pretty fast. Now this exploration actually brings us to another thing they've added which is sea combat which allows us once we've researched the important research such as weapons or armor to fight off pirates and destroying the pirates will allow us to access new path nodes and the size of the map does seem pretty big however the tip of what combat in this game has to offer so far judging by what I've seen feels very much like it's just a second thought and it's something that I'm really not particularly interested in if I'm honest. As we get further into the game we have access to more research which allows us to unlock new items, buildings and recipes and that is similar with all other factory based games. You know the drill. It allows us to get to the later tiers of tech. But this also gives us more difficult resources to refine and allows us to experiment with factory design and automation and I must admit I'd love them to add freight trains into the game but so far that isn't an option and I can't see it in the research tree. When it comes to the build system it does feel a little clunky currently and I'd love to see this refined to give a smoother experience. It's also time consuming so for larger factories it would be great to have a blueprint system in place which is something that generally speaking I dislike in most factory games. But as it stands I'm very hesitant to be too critical as I feel it's still early in the development. I want to show off the attention to detail that the devs have very carefully crafted. Look at the buildings, the visual element is something they haven't taken lightly and each building feels alive. The same with the vehicles and despite all the little things that I've picked up on I'm genuinely very impressed with this game. If we look over the tech you can see that there's a huge amount of planned additions to the full game and I could certainly see myself spending dozens of hours in game and saying that I'm already over 15 hours playtime in the first day so it must be worth it. That being said, certainly with the limitations of this build I feel that the later tiers on offer show some potential issues. Continuous population growth causes you to either provide too much opportunity for growth, leaving you with a huge sink to food and water, as well as a huge excess in workers, which in the long term results in mass starvation, and then a year later in game the whole process begins again. Or you're left maintaining a smaller settlement that still continuously produces more citizens that then become homeless. This is frustrating and causes a negative effect on your unity and very much makes you feel like there's no way to actually balance your population but I'm new to the game, maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. I've also found a slight issue with fuel production. For copper or plastic in the late game you actually need a byproduct of fuel, sour water and though it is possible to run out of fuel which is dire for your, co your colony, currently I'm finding that I'm not using enough fuel which saturates my production lines and leaves me without the sour water to produce acid for the copper. This would be fine except you require copper for the vehicle maintenance and building maintenance. So if you do not get rid of the fuel you may find your settlement struggling to run from the lack of copper. It's a catch 22 situation currently which I feel could need addressing later on although this could be easily solved right now by allowing fuel to be dumped if it's deemed necessary. In most ideal circumstances you wouldn't but it's something that we could do. Like I said though this is pre-alpha gameplay and things are all going to change but I'm honestly surprised at how developed the game is. For two developers they really have done fantastic work and pulled through with an awesome factory infused colony simulation and I believe that with enough backing the game will overcome all of these things that I've pointed out and grow to be successful in the factory game genre even if it is only to its specific niche but I do remain skeptical of the combat in this game and whether it really is necessary from the little hint of it that I've seen so far. 
it just didn't feel like part of the same game, and in my opinion, it either needs overhauling or removing, but I'm not a developer, nor the voice of the people, so regardless of that little gripe, I'd definitely recommend supporting this project, which is now available on Kickstarter, so if you're interested, do check them out. I'll pop a link in the description below. And with that said, if you're excited about this game and want to see me do more coverage over it, whether that's guides or a let's play when it's released, then do let me know in the comment section below. Anyway guys, let me know of your thoughts from this early access gameplay and more importantly I want to say a special thank you to Marek and Philip who took the time to develop this game off their own back and to kindly send me the pre-alpha game key as well as a special thank you to all of our amazing supporters who allow me to make this kind of content most notably our solo eclipse patrons the calamity and cerebral tag as well as our lunar eclipse patrons chris mccabe and lord of july as well as our blood moon of the day jimmy rogers anyway guys until next time as always ciao for now